I feel like my life has been uh, deeply framed by the idea of shame, like everything I do. <laughs> the world is huge and full of exciting cuisines you usually have to travel to experience. But just because you can't travel doesn't mean you can't enjoy them yourself. We're taking a trip of the tongue out to Japan where McDonald's has a sandwich called the Ebi Fileo. It's time for... So Far, So Good. Kaylin. Hi. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. Have you heard of shrimps? No. They're like little nightmare bug creatures, but pink. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, those, yeah, yeah. Yeah, those, gotcha. <laughs> okay, so we're making the McDonald's Ebi Fileo from Japan. Ebi means shrimp in Japanese, so this is literally translating to Fileo shrimp, which is something that we don't have in America. No. Does the idea of this burger excite you? Very much so, yes. You seem very excited. I am excited. Have you ever eaten at International McDonald's? No. One time at a McDonald's in France, the cashier refused to sell me two burgers because they saw it was one person. That makes no sense. I was like, I'm American, I, this is my birthright. Yeah. Anyway, so in the, in the Ebi Fileo comes the panko battered shrimp patty. There's a mustard sauce and a shrimp tempura sauce, but we're actually gonna be inspired by the 10th anniversary special edition that came out in 2015, which has black sesame paste, and spicy tartar sauce on it. That sounds great. We're gonna do a little mix and match. Perfect, I love that. I love shrimp. I love spicy. I have a hat on. I don't. Fair. Cool. Real ratio. First step to shrimp is to shrimp. Okay. So we have to take all these shrimp that have not yet been peeled, and I know what you're saying. You have like kitchen people over there. Why didn't they peel the shrimp? Right. I have the same question. I was wondering that about Trevor. He's just sitting over there. No, nah, he's on Twitter. He's fine. Okay, so we have to peel these shrimp. Just take it, grab the legs, take the shell off, grab the tail, pinch it, and you gotta peel the shrimp. Oh, great. And then. You gotta smell your hands all the time. That's something I do a lot in public and at work is I just smell my hands and then grimace. How many of these do we need to do? Probably a fair amount. I'm also getting pretty sloppy. When you're blending shrimp, you can afford to have some legs in there. I just figured you wouldn't notice, or if you mm -hmm. did, you'd assume it was you, so it was okay. Yeah, I might just throw some whole tail in. I don't care. Caitlin, what's the best lamb kidneys you've had when you're traveling? Oh, I actually just went to New Zealand. Wait, what was the best thing you had in New Zealand? Lamb. Why didn't you eat its kidneys? I don't know, I didn't. You're responsible for this lamb's death. You should eat its kidneys. Oh, uh, when I was in Australia, I had, um, I tried kangaroo. Oh! I felt awful about that. Why? They're giant rats that happen to be really good at boxing, but just because kangaroos are good at sports doesn't mean that yeah. they deserve any more respect. Don't uh, fact check me on this, but they're like country animal or whatever is their country food. But they eat their national animal. There you go, that's the sentence I was well, looking Well, kangaroos for. are like a really invasive species, so there was actually a program in Australia where you could literally just slaughter a kangaroo and they'd pay you money for it. So that was like that's the Uber crazy. driving in Australia back before. But what does that have to do with Uber? Well, I'm saying like it was a side hustle. Oh. It wasn't how people got around. They didn't I ride like, a kangaroo to a place and then kill it. <laughs> got it, okay. You don't feel any like shame about that? Should I? You feel a lot of shame about a lot of things? No. no? Well, not food. I feel like my life has been uh, deeply framed by the idea of shame, like everything I do. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and blend up these shrimp and make a nice shrimp paste. First try, oh. first try, food processor plugged in. Get a load of that, Nicole. Everyone doubted me. We all were holding our breath. Okay, so the Evi Fileo in Japan actually has like whole shrimp set in it, but I want a kind of binder to bind the whole shrimp. And so now we have to make this into, well, we're eventually gonna make this into a pentagon because that was the shape of the Ebi Fileo. So what we're gonna do is we're actually going to freeze this into a circle and then you're an artist. Cut it later. Cut it later. Can you take the spoon and then you're gonna spoon some into the circle and try and smear it around okay. to an even base. Do like a, about a half inch and then we're gonna take some of the whole shrimp and we're actually gonna set it in there. Then when it freezes, we're gonna take it out of the freezer and we're gonna batter it and fry it and all that shrimp should, and I use the term should, cook inside the crispy batter. Great, and now we're gonna take the ring mold off. We got a perfect little shrimp yeah. circle, and then we're just gonna put about four shrimpies in there. So we're gonna do this three more times, and then we're gonna get it in the freezer, and then we're gonna fry stuff. And also make condiments. Sure. But also fry stuff. Great. Awesome. Awesome. Well, let's do it. All right, Caleb, we got one of my favorite ingredients in the world to work with. This is kuro goma, or black sesame, which is exciting. You ever worked with this before? Yes. Have you ever made a pizza out of glue? Yes. That no, you... that's a lie. It was Mike. Oh, I thought I you made it. Start taking credit. Start, like, leaning in. Just okay. taking credit for a man's work. Do you remember that trebuchet I built? Yeah. That was That cool. was incredible. That was so cool. And the car that you built on the cheese wheels that actually worked? Oh, I built the car? Yeah, yeah. I like that version <laughs> yeah, of this. Yeah, yes, yeah. I did do that. All right, dump some of the sesame seeds. Seed. <laughs> dump, dump it. Dump, like, a quarter of it, because we need backups in case we screw up. That's perfect. Obviously, we're not trying to darken these anymore because it's black. Yeah. So we're just waiting to smell a kind of fragrant smell in these. And that's actually gonna release some of the essential oils. And then we're gonna put it into our little mortar and pestle. And we're gonna bash it up a little bit of honey. Okay. This is only on the 10th anniversary edition of the Ebi Fileo. But like, if there's any special edition of anything, I have to eat it. Anytime I travel abroad, I immediately go to a McDonald's or Taco Bell. Really? Because that's the type of person I am. Actually, when okay. I was in Israel, we had like a tour guide and I kept asking him questions. I was like, uh, I know there's a big underground house scene in Tel Aviv. What kind of energy drinks are popular? And he looks at me and he goes, 
Josh, I figured you out. You are interested in smut. You yeah. like the smut of what people consume. You were there for 10 minutes and he figured out, Josh, smut. Josh equals smut, yes, correct. Josh equals smut. So we're just gonna dump some of these in here. Bash it up, So yes. tell me more about Israel. I found out in Israel that I really love chicken spleens because they're illegal in the US. You can't get chicken spleens, but my favorite street food in Israel was called a Jerusalem mixed grill. Uh -huh. And it was chicken spleen, heart, liver, kidney, and normal chicken thigh tucked into a pita with schrug. You ever had schrug? Smoog? Schrug, yeah, smoog. Uh, the, the dragon from the Hobbit franchise. Uh, <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna stream in some honey in that. And then you're gonna keep pounding until this turns into a nice paste that we can just smear on the bottom bun. Go faster though. Yeah. I was doing great. No. I like to do kind of equal parts carrot and stick constantly, where I constantly uh, denigrate you, but also say you're doing great, sending mixed messages, and then you don't know if you failed or succeeded. Well, it's a good thing I don't care. Perfect. That actually is looking really good. Can I take a crack at it? Please. I was doing it slowly for the people. You gotta, no, you gotta violently bash it. Got you gotta it. take okay. out all that aggression, all the shame that you felt from yeah. childhood. You gotta put it into your sesame paste. I think it's really good, try it. It's tasty, right? It's got like a real kind of roastiness to it, almost this kind of popcorn-y flavor. Yeah, I was gonna say burnt, but yeah. No, it's <laughs> not. Kidding. Burnt, it's not burnt. We didn't burn it. No, it's good, I like it. It's gonna go well with the shrimp? I think so. Should we cook some shrimp? Yeah, what else would we do? I don't know. Right now we have circle shrimps, but we need to turn these into pentagon shrimps. So you're gonna do is just grab one of these, rip it off, and then you're gonna use this knife to cut it into a pentagon. And while you're doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and get our wet batter going. So we're gonna take the shrimp, we're gonna drop it into flour, then into a wet batter just made with eggs and milk, and then into panko breadcrumbs, which are great because you get extra crispy. Sure. Super slippery, right? Yeah, I got yeah, it. Yeah. You good. want your shrimp slippery. Do you eat a lot of Japanese food? I do, I love it. It's actually like my Ooh. favorite food. What's your favorite Japanese dish? Uh, I really like yaki noodles. Yeah? Yeah. I'm a big udon fan. One of my favorite places, Kiko is operating camera right now. What up, Kiko? We used to go to this uh, izakaya called Rio Zanpaku down in Torrance. I've been there with you. We went there together. Yeah, we went there. Remember well, that I night? I forgot. I only remember Kiko being there. I'm sorry. There would be reasons that we didn't remember. We went yeah, to Del Taco were, at four in the morning. There are reasons we don't. you didn't remember. Yeah, yeah. We ended up going to Del Taco at four in the morning. Now I remember yeah. it. That was like yeah. one of my favorite nights. That's one of my favorite it places was a great time. to go in LA. I miss that place so, so, so much. I can't wait to go back. This looks good. I like what you did there. We're going to take this here Pentagon shrimp, we're just gonna drop it into flour, okay. get it all nice and covered. We're going wet hand, dry hand. We're just gonna cover this in panko breadcrumbs, get it all nice and crispy. Have you ever deep fried? No. Great, so the key is that the oil is more afraid of you than you are of it. I don't believe that. Okay, just very gently kind of insert the tip down and then pull your hand away, make sure it doesn't splash. Okay, There it is, cool. that was really good it. actually. Yeah. All right, keep an eye on that. I'm gonna keep battering okay. these up. Do you remember the owner of Rio Zanpaki? We kept calling Kevin the general. Yes. And we kept asking him why, and he's just like, I don't know. He just keeps calling me the general. Yeah, I do. Yeah. And apparently once I went there with Kevin, and apparently, uh, you know, you're not supposed to remember the whole time there, but I went there once with Kevin, and uh, Kevin then went there with his wife later, and the owner goes like, hey, you were here with another girl last week, right? And he was like, what? And it turns out he was talking about me. So <laughs> apparently to the owner of my favorite izakaya in LA, I look like, a girl that would be in Kevin Riggs' league, which is great. Oh, good for you. Yeah, I think that's that's a nice thing. These are looking nice and beautiful and cold mm -hmm. brown. We're just gonna let these rest here. Okay. We're gonna fry up the rest of these, and then we're gonna build our sandwiches. That sounds fun. My hands are covered in gross. We got our beautiful McDonald's buns. We got our crispy Ebby patties. We got our slightly wilted McDonald's lettuce, but we need to make one more thing. In McDonald's in Japan, they call it Aurora sauce, or it's commonly known as tempura sauce. Most people say it is a combination of ketchup and mayonnaise. So we actually have Japanese QP mayonnaise. It typically has more egg yolk and a little bit of MSG in it. So it gives you that little, you gotta do it. All right, cool. So can okay. you make that sauce? So do about equal parts that QP mayonnaise and good old fashioned American Heinz ketchup, best ketchup in the game. And then we have a little bit of spicy sesame oil in there. Do more mayonnaise oh, than that. Right. You know someone's new to this kitchen when they leave the amount of mayonnaise to that. And then we have something called nanami togarashi powder, okay. which is Japanese for seven spice. It has a lot of chili powder in it, a little bit of sesame, a little bit of seaweed. Just a little bit, just a little like, oh, hold it there. Perfect. <laughs> that worked out remarkably well. Oh, good. I love that you put your little touch on it afterwards. Well, I just thought, you know, a little bit of Caitlin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. just a dash of Caitlin. Sure. That'd be your cooking show name. Just a dash of Caitlin. Welcome to a dash of Caitlin. I'm Caitlin and I don't cook. And I have no viewers. Yet. Yet. No, that might say I'll take you yours. <laughs> you can mix it. Okay, well, you didn't. I didn't <laughs> Sorry, really, I forgot that I, I have to jump say. I the gun a little bit. Yeah, yeah, but... mix it. Most sauces tend to be like a one, one color. So I'm going to take a little bit of this black sesame paste and I'm just going to smear it on the bottom bun. This is where on the normal Ebi Fileo you would have a little bit of mustard, but since we're taking inspiration, for the 10th anniversary edition, we're just gonna do a little schmear of that black sesame. And now, 
We're just gonna add our ebby patties, and then you are going to top that with lettuce. Be artistic about okay. it. Okay. There it is. It's like a Jackson Pollock. What do you think of his art? What do I think of what? Jackson Pollock's art. Oh, I actually really like it. I love the way that his art forces your eyes to really travel quickly around the canvas, and yeah. you never can actually focus on one particular aspect of it, which to me, that was the actual point of Jackson Pollock's painting. Yeah. Do you like Jackson Pollock? I mean, he's cool. It's just like, I could take this and just, that would be what he did. My favorite painter, though, is a guy named Erman Nitsch. Yeah, he basically did what Jackson Pollock did, but with lamb's blood. That is cooler. It's yeah, way, it's metal, right? Sense. It's super it cool. Is. So we're just gonna smear a little bit of that tempura sauce on there. And then that's it. We have made the Ebby Fileo inspired by the 10th anniversary it's edition. Kaylin, are you ready to take your free cruise to Japan? Ooh. Probably not. E cool. Okay. <laughs> Kaylin, come on. Okay. We're going to Japan. All right, I'm gonna go this Kaylin, way. Kaylin, no, Japan's over here. Kaylin, wow. Wow. Thank you so much for joining me in Japan. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. Yeah, absolutely. You ever been before? No, I really want to go. I heard the McDonald's are great. I've heard that before too, but should we test it? I think we should. Okay. All right, let's open this up. I'm actually really excited for this. Okay, hold on, hold on. I always, whenever I get a sandwich like this, I like to just give it a solid press. You don't have to, but this is my method. I like to smush it down a little bit. Make it easier to eat? Mm -hmm. yeah. Get it like nice and compact. Okay. We're gonna dig in? Yeah. Let's do it. Oh, hell yeah. I'm gonna have a big old rest of flavor. I like that a lot. What's the first thing you're tasting? Shrimp. I got a lot of shrimp too. That really comes forward in this, yeah. To me, everything on the sandwich freaking works. Like the shrimp with that sweet black sesame and the sesame gives you a little bit earthiness. You got like, you know, the classic fast food combination of ketchup and mayonnaise in my house growing up, we called it fancy sauce. And then, you know, the little crunch of lettuce on the signature McDonald's bun. Everything about this is fantastic. And if you look at the next best thing at American McDonald's, the filet fish there's no comparison there. No, it is what it is. That's the one note. Yeah. That's just like squishy and yellow American cheese and like an unidentifiable fish. Whereas this is identifiable shrimps. To be clear, I have nothing against fast food shrimp. I've eaten fast food shrimp from Popeyes, from Long John Silver's, from the Del Taco. I want to eat fast food McDonald's shrimp. I do have a problem, but that's okay. We can have different opinions. I like this though. Despite not being down with the fast food shrimp, yeah. do you think the McDonald's in America should add this to the menu? I do, but I want you to be the one making it. You're talking about me making every single one of these at every single, there are 33,000 McDonald's locations. Yes. All right, well, this has been the last show that I will ever be on at Mythical. I am now going to simultaneously be at all the McDonald's kitchens all at once. Thank you for watching while this existed. I'm gonna go uh, live in my eternal life of servitude making shrimp burgers. That's what you want? Yep, I do. Right. Well, settled. And if you think McDonald's should add this to the permanent menu in the US, tweet at McDonald's with hashtag so far so good. Thank you so much for stopping by the Mythical Kitchen. We got new recipes for you every week. New episodes of A Hot Dog is a Sandwich out every Wednesday, wherever you get your podcasts. Hit us up on Instagram, at Mythical Kitchen, with pictures of your mythical dishes under hashtag dreams become food. We'll see you all next time. Get as messy as you want in your kitchen when you have the Mythical Kitchen Towel. Available now at mythical.com.